Boom! An explosion sent Second Lieutenant Laira Aurelia face first into the ground. Ah! She groaned and was flipped on her back. A scourge readied his fangs to snap at her neck when the upper half of his body and head seemed to explode, showering her in small chunks of burnt flesh and blood. Everything seemed to spin for her as another figure ran into her makeshift fighting hole and tried to help her up. Private? She questioned in a gaze. She could tell he was trying to speak to her, but all she heard was this droning ringing. The private grabbed her by the plate carrier and dragged her into a depression as bolts of plasma flew in every direction. Everything was spinning for Aurelia, but slowly she started to regain her senses as the private went from yelling at her to firing his weapon. What? She yelled as she snapped back to reality. The sounds of cacophonous weapon fire and explosions resounded all around her. Everywhere she looked was scattered members of her platoon fighting. I said, what the hell do we do now, ma'am? The private yelled back. Panic showed on her face as she saw a Scourge rushing her troops in suicidal charges. A Scourge managed to dive into her fighting hole with the private, its clawed hand sinking deep into the private's stomach, and mouth snapped closed on his face. The muffled screaming haunted her as she fumbled to pull out her sidearm. The Scourge raked the poor Uviel's internal organs as its sharp teeth tore at the private's helmet. Aurelia managed to pull her sidearm and shoot the vile thing, as it still raked and clawed at the private. No matter how many times she shot it, it was still clawing and thrashing. Fucking die! 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 She screamed, firing into the side of the beast. When the beast finally went limp, she rushed over to her subordinate, her hands over his deep wounds. Help! Medic! She screamed. She looked around her, and to her horror, everyone was still fighting for their lives, firing in every direction. Aurelia spotted another scourge coming out of a hole in the ground. They locked eyes and it started sprinting at her with a crude machete in hand. She reacted immediately and grabbed the plasma rifle on the ground and started spraying into the thing. The scourge slammed into the second lieutenant, knocking the wind out of her and pushing her off the still screaming private. Luckily, by the time it hit her, it dropped its machete. However, the scourge opened its mouth to tear Aurelia's throat out and disembowel her with his sharpened claws. She managed to grab the thing's arm and shove her helmet in its mouth before it could kill her. The scourge thrashed about violently, shaking Aurelia as she held on for dear life. Ah! Help me! Aurelia screamed as she was repeatedly slammed into the soft mud. It took ten seconds for the blasted thing to die. She held its arms, trying to prevent her tearing her stomach out. The scourge finally went limp on top of Aurelia, blood pouring all over her. She pushed the foul thing off, grabbed the rifle and proceeded to fire a long burst of plasma into it while screaming her lungs out. The visor on her helmet was punctured and cracked all across her field of view. Not even the HUD was working properly. Aurelia pulled her helmet off, gasping for air and yelled, Fuck! Another explosion went off just above the depression of her makeshift fighting hole, blasting mud into her face. She yelped in fright, grabbed the rifle and looked over the depression. Three more were crawling out of the very same hole as her attacker. Aurelia rested the rifle on the lip of the depression and opened up on them before they all could come out. The bodies of the first two fell backwards on top of the scourge still climbing out. Her position was immediately showered in plasma fire as the enemy took notice. Ducking back down, Aurelia felt the earth around her sizzle and turned to glass, as what felt like the entire scourge army concentrated their fire on her position. She held her head and went into the fetal position to make as small a target as possible. The blasts of plasma weapons were getting louder and louder. They were closing in on her. No! Please! Not like this! She screamed as the plasma fires seemed to sound louder and louder each passing second. Funk! Aurelia opened her eyes, and to her horror a grenade landed right by her feet. Out of pure reflex, she kicked it away, just in time before it exploded. Foom! The blast slammed Aurelia into the side of the pit she was hiding in. She could barely move. Her world was spinning and everything was ringing again. Am I dead? She wondered to herself. Aurelia's hearing came back enough to hear the Scourge's guttural language getting closer to her. The Scourge was just above her position when thunderous barks exploded several meters away. Quack, 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 quack! The group of Scourge who were pushing her position screeched in pain as round after round perforated their bodies. A human popped out from a bush. His weapon kept barking as he ran to the nearby tree for cover. Waste these fucks! 
He yelled and continued to lay down suppressive fire. Flashes of fire and the deafening roar of his weapon mesmerized Aurelia. Elitaria came running in just behind him, got behind an overgrown root and started yelling orders. Fan out! Suppress these fucks! Liliandra, grab two guys and push right! Elitaria bellowed and opened fire on any plasma flashes she saw. Liliandra and two other soldiers immediately started sprinting, weaving between trees and jumping over roots while Elitaria, the human, and the rest of the squad laid down a hail of suppressing fire. Liliandra and her crew ran towards more fire, and she saw Scolation and the rest of the platoon pinned down as well. They all got behind cover and started wasting lizards in the open, trying to push her pinned platoon mates. The brief lull in fire as the scourge took cover from incoming fire gave the battered platoon the reprieve they needed to get back up and return fire. Meanwhile, Khalid ran into the pit with a second lieutenant and yanked her out of it. Wait! Private Gitchell needs medical attention! She yelled as she was almost thrown out of the pit. Khalid looked down at the poor, motionless Uvil and balked as he noticed that his internal organs were hanging out of his torso. He's dead. He replied emotionlessly as he pushed her out. Elotaria ran over and grabbed her lieutenant and scrunched her face as a torrent of emotion ran through her. Gitchell, they were pretty good friends, always in trouble. He was private longer than anyone else, and there was a running joke about how long he'd stay one. Aurelia fell to her knees as her legs gave out. No, it wasn't supposed to be like this. We don't have fucking time. We need to leave. Elotaria screamed, almost in rage at her lieutenant. Elitaria literally dragged the poor woman through the small opening to get behind more overgrown roots and trees. Everyone kept firing their weapons and hoping to keep their enemies' heads down, dropping any scourge brave or foolish enough to leave their cover. Finally, after what seemed like an eternity, the fighting seemed to cease as the scourge either fled or lay dead throughout the jungle. But the sounds of distant gun battles and explosions echoed all around them, keeping them on edge. Elitaria glanced back at the lieutenant. She was a mess. She was sobbing and shaking uncontrollably. The lieutenant seemed confused. It was hard to keep her standing as she stumbled around and started vomiting. Elitaria couldn't tell if she was breaking down or if she had a concussion. Ma'am, what do we do now? She tried to ask, hoping something sensible would come out of her. Aurelia looked up at her in horror and fell on her ass. I... no... I don't know... Private Gitchell, we have to help him... She deliriously said. Elitaria clicked her tongue as rage filled her over her dead friend. Ma'am, he's dead. I need you to tell me... She stopped and looked at Khalid. Sir, what do we do now? Khalid stopped scanning for movement and looked at her with a raised eyebrow. Look, I'm just a liaison for our fire support. I'm not your CO. He rebuked her. Elitaria kept staring at him like a lost puppy, hoping he would have some answer. Khalid sighed and said, We're too deep. We've pushed too far into this ambush. We have enemies and friendlies mixed everywhere. We should backtrack, find our lines, and eliminate directions they can attack us from. He finished. Elotaria looked down at the second lieutenant. She was on her knees, sobbing and vomiting intermittently. She was unfit for command right now, and she didn't know the status of the platoon sergeant. Or any NCO, for that matter. If Lieutenant Claxus was here, she muttered. Elotaria shifted her gaze back to the human. He was their best hope right now. She nodded and then ordered Luliandra over the radio to corral the survivors to her position. Luliandra and the survivors made their way over to Elotaria and her squad, carrying a male Tauri and several other wounded members of the platoon. The look of shock and despair spread all over Elotaria's face. A battered group, almost half of which were carrying wounded. If she excluded her squad, there were only 13 of her platoon mates running in her direction five of which were wounded and were being carried, including the sergeant first class. W where is everyone? Elotaria asked. Loliandra, helping to carry Scolation, looked down before saying, They're... they're all dead. The platoon sergeant groaned in pain. His leg was gone from the knee down. Most of the company was out here when the ambush happened, he interjected. The group laid him to the ground as he continued. Lady Aurelia, we rushed in to try to save them, but we were caught in it too. Crack, crack, crack! Everyone snapped their heads to the human as his loud weapon resounded. He was shooting into a hole a bit further ahead where they dragged the concussed second lieutenant from. 
One of the fuckers was still alive in their little tunnel, Khalid said. He looked over to the group and instructed, Remember when I said we should leave? The human started making his way towards the battered platoon. I meant now. We should leave right now. Even though it never stopped, the sounds of fighting and explosions became more intense all around them. Elitaria looked around and asked, Who's in charge? Privates. They were all privates. A female Tauri soldier who was new said, You are corporal? Were all the NCOs dead? No, that couldn't be. There had to be someone alive. Elitaria got on the company network. This is Cygnus 2. Cygnus Actual, do you copy? Silence reigned over the net when she tried again. And again. This is Cygnus 1. Is anyone out there? She tried something different. The reply came back. It disturbed her and the rest of the team. This is Cygnus 3. We're surrounded. Our lieutenant is dead. Please help us. They're everywhere. The transmission was immediately cut short. The grim message was followed by more platoons in the same situation, all calling for help and all being overrun. Elitaria started hyperventilating in her helmet as everyone was staring at her. No, I... I'm just a corporal. She started backing up. Panic started to overwhelm her. Ellie! Liliandra yelled as she grabbed Elitaria's shoulders. Ellie! We need you! You can get us out of here! Liliandra finished, trying to shake sense back into her friend. Elitaria was about to break down. This was too much for her. She could barely keep her squad alive, and now she had to keep what was left of the platoon alive, too? Loliandra pleaded. Ellie, please! Just tell us what to do! Your plans have been working out so far! Elitaria managed to regain control of her breathing. Her gaze found the human, trotting over. Hey, we need to get going. It sounds like another offensive is happening around here. It's only a matter of time before fuckers start popping up here, too, he said. Elitaria felt like she saw her savior running towards her, as she remembered his words. She straightened up and addressed the platoon. Get our wounded. We managed to punch a hole through their earlier ambush. We need to get close to ground and find our lines. Loliandra sighed in relief. Maybe they'll make it out alive. Maybe. Elitaria looked at Loliandra and asked, Do you remember the route we took? Loliandra affirmed and said, Yeah, I'll take point. I know what path we took. Elitaria patted her shoulder and said, Good, let's get the hell out of here before... Massive explosions went off in the distance. The pressure waves came rocketing towards them. Everyone looked up in awe. That was towards the road. The loud cracks and pressure from the explosion felt like a hammer punched everyone in the chest. The platoon formed a protective circle around their wounded as they set off in the direction of the road. There was a brief pause in the fighting all around the jungle, but that only lasted a moment as the intensity picked up again. Khalid cursed as he lifted his rifle, spotting a lizard peeping out of a hole. Crack! A single shot rang out, taking the back of the poor lizard's head off. Time to go! He yelled as he fired more rounds, as more started popping up out of holes. The group immediately got moving, forming a protective circle around their wounded as they made a fighting retreat. As Liliandra guided the group through, the rest of the combat effective members took turns providing suppressing fire and peeling back to keep up. They were smaller this time and came in waves. Some had plasma casters, but the rest had makeshift melee weapons. Khalid kept up his precise fire. One or two shots for each shitter that popped up. It was callous, but it felt like one of those ancient games. What was it called? Duck Hunt? The rest of the platoon opened up in a frenzy, saturating the entire area with plasma. Khalid noticed something off about a group of branches and leaves next to his foot, between him and Elitaria. He pointed his weapon down at it and kicked it. There he saw a mortified lizard, grenade clutched in its hand, getting ready to pull the pin. His friends below him speaking that guttural language of theirs. Shock and fear spread over its face as its eyes shifted between the barrel of its weapon and Khalid's sadistic, smiling face. Hey, bud. How's it going? Khalid said in a gleeful voice. Crack, crack! The poor thing fell back on top of his friends and dropped a few meters to the bottom. The group started to move again when Khalid pulled the pin of his own grenade and tossed it in. Vibe check, he jovially said as he jogged to get back in formation with the platoon. Elitaria heard muffled explosions. She turned her head and saw dust and debris shoot out from a hole in the position the human was just at. Things were getting bad. There were so many of them, 
and the platoon was moving slowly. She saw a group of Scourge running towards their position from a flank, and immediately gave orders. Contact left! Thassia! Malia! Kill him! She bellowed. Both of Elitaria's privates turned left with her, and all three of them let loose a barrage. The fully automatic weapons ripped apart a large group of Scourge that seemed to be rushing towards them. With that threat seemingly taken care of, she took notice of Khalid yelling into his radio. The human caught up with her and yelled over the cacophony of weapon fire. Keep moving towards the road, and keep them suppressed as you can! I've got a flight of two honey badgers ready to fuck shit up! Elitaria didn't know what the hell that meant, but she didn't argue. She ran to the main group and yelled, Keep moving! You four, with me! We need to provide suppressing fire! Khalid saw them move into position and keep the lizards' heads down. They were coming out in force now. The bigger, meaner, and better equipped ones were coming out now. The Kong came in two flavors here, and it was easy to tell them apart. The first kind were the smaller, assumed conscripts. They didn't know how to fight. Poorly equipped and poorly trained, they'd run in a suicidal sprint, but they were easy to spook with a little provoking. The second kind was a lot more dangerous. Hard inside. They were soldiers. Real soldiers. They had officers who weren't so stupid, and they'd push you if you weren't careful. A veritable horde of the second kind was coming towards them. The plasma fire was becoming much more accurate, and their movements much more refined. They sprinted from cover to cover, each element providing suppressing fire each time another moved. Khalid needed to handle this. He yelled into the radio for the two CAS aircraft flying in the AO, area of operation. Be advised, we're moving west of the clearing, towards the road. He jumped over a route just before bolts of plasma splashed a tree just in front of him. We're taking fire from the west. Stand by, we're popping smoke. Khalid pulled a pin on a red smoke grenade and threw it ten meters in front of him. It took only a few moments before it started to billow out over the canopy of the jungle. The Imperial platoon was pinned down at this point. Too many were coming out of the woodwork. Do you have the red smoke? He yelled into his mic. A reply came. Roger, I spot the red smoke. Khalid focused. Roger, gun run. North to south, east of the smoke. The pilot replied. Copy that, east of the smoke. I'm looking at danger close. Khalid lifted his rifle and started shooting away as he yelled at the platoon. Get your fucking boys up here and start shooting! They were getting closer, just 40 meters until they were overrun. The platoon dropped the wounded and manned positions to return fire against the oncoming horde. Khalid yelled into his radio again. Commander's initial, Juliet Foxtrot. Keep your fire east of the smoke and east of the clearing. A few lizards managed to break out of the clearing to push their positions, but Elitaria's platoon managed to waste any who ran from cover. Unfortunately, this was met by a massive counterfire, putting everyone's head down. Khalid heard the pilot. Roger, I'm keeping my fire east of the smoke and east of the clearing. You're cleared hot, he yelled into his mic. One of the honey badgers, a heavier VTOL with an 8-barreled 30mm railgun and several arrangements of missiles, came in for a low-angled strafe. Khalid yelled at everyone near him, Take cover now! Just as he yelled that, a series of rapid explosions roared through the forest like unending thunder. Elitaria and Luliandra managed to catch a glimpse of it before ducking back behind their tree. Hundreds of small explosions happened at the same time, snapping trees, kicking up dirt and red chunks flying everywhere. Then came the roar. Khalid peeked over, but more plasma fires slammed back into their positions. Two! I need you two! Same spot! Keep them wet! Several hundred more explosions happened in almost the exact same spot. More pink mist, and more snapped trees. This gave them a moment of rest, and Khalid got up and said, Let's fucking move! Now! The group got their wounded and proceeded to nearly sprint through the forest. The plasma fire came again, this time to the northeast. Khalid yelled into his radio. We're moving! I need you north of the smoke. You'll see a giant tree with vines wrapped around it, just south of that. Two, I need you in the same spot but coming from the north. Give it to me in the clearing! He finished. The pilot replied. Understood. In the north, the biggest tree in the jungle with giant vines around it. That's a firm. The north tree, and two, give it to me in the clearing! Khalid yelled. The fire was getting more intense. They were caught in a linear ambush, and the entire platoon ground to a halt trying to take cover. 
Loliandra tried to stand up and fire back, but she was immediately hit and fell backwards. Loli! No! Elotaria screamed, and she scrambled over to her. Loliandra hit the ground hard, but Elotaria quickly got over to her to assess her wounds. Luckily, her plate caught it. Three burning holes in her ablative plate. Fuck me, Loliandra said, as she picked up her rifle again. Khalid heard the pilot again. One's in from the north, I'll get you just south of the tree, and two is giving it to you in the clearing. He lifted his weapon and shot a rushing lizard, bum-rushing his position. Roger, give me that gun run, baby. The cacophonous roars resounded as the northeast of them exploded into fragments of bark and gore. Khalid kept firing his weapon, even though the explosions were so close. Two! Two! I need you! We're still taking fire from the east! Dozens of them were running out into the clearing, where they too were ripped apart. Move now! Khalid ordered as he started running west. We're moving west! He yelled into his mic. There was a brief respite as they ran like bats out of hell through the jungle. They could see the road, but then their northwest started erupting into plasma fire, dropping two of their platoon. Keep going! Elotariel yelled as she turned to fire on the new, uninvited guests. Anyone who isn't carrying wounded, fight! She screamed her orders. The entire platoon turned to face their new threat. More scourge ran at them from a new direction. The smaller conscripts were rushing their position in their manic suicidal charge. Dozens of them. The Imperials opened fire first, ripping away at the horde as they ran, inaccurately firing their weapons. Khalid immediately went on the radio. Okay, one, my northwest along the tree line. Two, to my east, west of the smoke. This was the last stretch or the last stand. They were being overrun. The Honey Badger VTOLs decided to risk it all and expose themselves over the road and came in for this last gun run. Missiles and plasma fire shot out from the enemy tree line narrowly missing their crafts as they came in for low-angled strafes. Both craft expended the last of their ammunition into their respective targets, and full burned out of the AO. The pilot made one last call over the radio with a red in his voice. We're out of 30mm and we're returning to our overwatch positions. Good luck out there.